CD Projekt Red was so hasty in order to do damage control after some recent rumors that uh, they're getting exposed for being the absolute liars that they are. And this is a massive, massive red flag for this company. One, we've, one of a number that we've seen in recent years indicating that future projects are likely going to be a woke mess. Before we get to this, I'd like to ask you, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future videos here at the Trent Report. This is the headline. CD Projekt Red CEO Michael Nowakowski claims company hires based on merit despite company's website claiming it embraces equitable practices. You can't be hiring based on merit if you are indeed embracing equitable practices. Those two things are not compatible. I think you're lying, Michael Nowakowski. On top of that, we know that they have a scholarship program that literally excludes men. So no, you're not hiring based on merit. Absolutely not. <laughs> Let's just start off right there. So, uh, but how do we get here? How do we get here? Well, Endymion shared some details about what a source told him was happening inside CD Projekt Red. And he said this, that CD Projekt Red is in absolute chaos right now based on who actually is still working there that used to work on the previous games. He added, apparently, uh, lots of senior talent has already left CD Projekt Red. For example, the director of Witcher 3 has long left the studio, and they've already created their own studio with their own new game as well. Apparently, places like Warhorse Studios, the makers of Kingdom Deliverance, they have actually been poaching talent from CD Projekt Red like crazy these past few years. He went on to say this, I was told that problems that are plaguing Ubisoft, like diversity hires, are also starting to damage and ruin CD Projekt Red as well. According to that other source, CD Projekt has begun to rely heavily on outsourcing to contractors to help with their games because the new talent that they have is nowhere near where they need them to be right now. He also said this, I was told the reason why the next Witcher is using Unreal Engine instead of the Red Engine that previous games did is largely because most of the senior talent that worked and understood the Red Engine are not at CD anymore, and Unreal is more of a one-size-fits-all engine that many devs are familiar with these days. And then he added this, as I am told, CD Projekt Red right now is uh, in a very tough spot, and they're apparently hoping that their pedigree is going to carry these games to millions in sales. So uh, Nowakowski responded to this video, specifically responded to a post on X that Endymion uh, shared promoting the video. And Nowakowski wrote this on X. Seems like seems we live in times where anyone can record complete nonsense and make a story out of it. CD Projekt Red talent leaving. We have the lowest rotation of people in recent years. DEI driven recruitment. We hire based on merit and talent alone just as we make games driven by artistic vision alone. He then addressed why the company chose Unreal. He says, why do we choose Unreal Engine? Because it enables us to work on our games more efficiently and we remain cutting edge tech-wise. He then admitted that Conrad uh, Tomaskowitz, the director of The Witcher 3, did leave the company. He says The Witcher 3's director left, well, yeah, more than two years ago. Now, can we stop looking for conspiracy theories and go back to making cool stuff? So even within his own post here, he's talking he's talking about the, how they have the lowest uh, rotation of people in recent years. And then he's like, oh, it was just, it was two years ago, just two years ago. That's so long ago. I mean, you literally can't make this stuff up. These people are so deceptive. They, I think they buy their own lies. I think they literally believe their own lies. They live in a world of lies. So when they lie, they probably think they are telling the truth when it's so apparently and blatantly obvious that it is a lie because they're just living these lies that they they deluded themselves into thinking that is kind of reality despite the fact that it's not. So let's break down some of these claims regarding top talent leaving CD Projekt Red. Reddit user Agusk extracted a ton of information from a Legacy Kill HD video that detailed that at least 11 directors and department leads left CD Projekt Red back in 2021, 2021 or had at least left by then following the release of Cyberpunk 2077. So there's the video if you want to watch from Legacy Killer. And then here's the, the, the Reddit post if you want to see that. But basically, he lists off all of these uh, people that used to work on, work at CD Projekt Red. A lot of them worked on The Witcher 3. You have the game director, Conrad Tomaskowitz. You have quest director, Mateus Tomaskowitz. Cinematic director, Pavel uh, Swarzniski. Head of production, Peter 
uh, Chris Wanusluk. I'm going to butcher all these Polish names. I'm sorry. Principal Engine Programmer, Balas Toruk. Lead Animator, Jamie Burry. Creative Director, Sebastian Stepien. Senior Producer, Dominika Gonsiorowska. Engine Director, Tomas Janarski. And Art Director, Katarzyna Red Redisiuk. So there's a lot. Those are a lot. And those are all like department heads, directors. They all are gone. They're all gone. Like art director, quest director, cinematic director, head of production, game director, principal engine programmer. I mean, that is a lot of talent that has left. That has left. So yes, you have lost talent. Maybe you're not losing it as quickly as you once were, as you claim, but you clearly have lost top talent and Demian is correct you have lost top talent as far as the fact that you hire based on merit we know this is an absolute lie you literally have a page on your website that is titled diversity and inclusion and what does it say our purpose is to create revolutionary role-playing games with memorable stories that inspire game gamers we can only deliver on these goals and promises with an amazing, passionate team whose talents and professional skills reflect the breadth of experience in the world. A diverse and inclusive work environment boosts creativity and innovation, which is exactly what we need in order to push the limits of technology and storytelling. Who is making these? Why do they always repeat the same claim that it's boosting creativity and innovation? I 100% I don't believe that is the case. You would think that people that had a singular vision were all on board. Uh, they would be the ones actually performing better. I mean, that's usually the case when you look at sports teams, that everyone is on the same page. They aren't all trying to m do their own strategies. You don't have... You don't have the forward trying to play defense and the defender trying to play offense on a soccer team. No, they, they know what their role is. They know what the vision is. They know the, the system that the teams are, that the team is supposed to be playing in order to achieve success. They master that system and they find that success. They're not trying to have all of these different people trying to do uh, all kinds of different things and yeah, and all this other stuff. It just, it, it doesn't even make sense. It's, it's, it's it, ah, it doesn't even pass the sniff test. Common sense says this is not true. A diverse and inclusive work environment does not boost creativity and innovation. I doubt that there is any data that shows this. We know that the data that they tried to say that if you have a diverse and inclusive workforce and an executive staff, uh, that it increases profitability is completely and utterly false. They cannot replicate that. And, and even if you do try and look at any look at any other studies about this, it shows that that is not the case. It doesn't stand up when you look at these companies on the Fortune 500 and all of this stuff, S and P 500, and how they perform. It just is not true. This is this is a lie. It's literally a lie. Nevertheless, the webpage also reveals the company engages in equitable practices. As I said, a far cry from the claim it that it hires based on merit and talent. This is what it says. We are, we're not afraid to stand for what we believe in. By implementing inclusive benefits and creating a space where everyone can be themselves, we create a positive example for other companies and help affect positive social change. Healthy teams are ones where all team members feel good, valued, and safe. And these are the teams that we, that we want to empower inside Red by introducing various initiatives. And that lists off all of these initiatives. One of them is literally called the Diversity Charter. And they explain, we're among the companies that signed the Diversity Charter, a document committing to non-discrimination in the workplace, as well as to the introduction of policies that create and promote diversity. This is hilarious. They're saying that they <laughs> that they committed to non-discrimination because as we get to uh, this here, they literally have a partnership with a organization called Girls in the Game that literally discriminates against men for a scholarship program that they fund. I mean, you, you cannot make this stuff up. You literally cannot make this stuff up. Oh, we're all about non-discrimination, but we literally discriminate against men. Just it's people, the entire company is a lie. <laughs> uh, it goes on though and says, as well as to the introduction of policies that create and promote diversity. So if you're promoting diversity, if you're promoting diversity, you are not hiring based on merit and talent. You are hiring based on diversity. That is what you're hiring on. So you cannot tell me that you are hiring based on talent and merit when you are literally on your website says 
that you are uh, you've signed this diversity charter thing. You're one of the first companies to do so, and you've literally instituted policies to promote diversity. And the only way to do that is by hiring people based on skin color, identity, et cetera, not talent, not merit. We were also listed as one of the top employers in Poland in terms of managing diversity and inclusion. Okay. And then it has this here too. It boasts that it is, quote, committed to promoting social change and being an example of it. All of our efforts aimed at meeting this goal can be found here. This company is literally not about selling video games anymore. Uh, I think they stopped trying to sell video games uh, after Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, and that was only after they received massive, massive, massive backlash because their game was a complete buggy mess. And uh, now they are just completely and fully are now just promoting social change. Uh, that's literally what it says they do now, that they promote social change. They no longer are trying to create video games. They're about promoting social change. So this guy is a complete and utter liar. Uh, we have the receipts here. They're literally on his own website. It's not really difficult to find, uh, which begs the question as to why he was so hasty at uh, trying to uh, push back against the rumors that Endymion was sharing. Uh, and the fact that he had to lie multiple times in this post indicates to me there is probably a lot of truth to what uh, Endymion's source was telling him and what he reported, that this entire company is a complete and utter mess. It is in chaos. We know, we know that they hired a woman named Mary Kenny, who has stated that her goal her goal is to pull every lever possible to push the gay agenda when it comes to video game development. She's not about trying to make video games. She's about trying to push the gay agenda. And she has said that publicly in an interview. And she said it before she even announced that CG Project Red had hired her. So they knew what they were getting. Because again, they're not about, they're not about creating and selling video games anymore. They are about promoting social change. That is what this company is about. They don't want people to know it. They want people to still think that they're the company that made The Witcher 3, that made Cyberpunk 2077. They're not. They are literally not the same company. We documented how all of those top developers left the company, and now they have made it clear that they are a slave to the DEI and woke agenda, and that they will promote it, uh, so much so that they are willing to lie publicly to do it and hope that, that you're just going to guzzle down and accept their lie. Well, we're not. We're not going to accept your lie. Far gone are the days when you opened up The Witcher 3, uh, the disc, the physical copy, and you, you, you saw the gratitude that the developers had towards the players who purchased that game. No longer, th that company doesn't exist anymore. It literally does not exist anymore. This is basically, this company is basically just as bad as Sweet Baby Inc., in my opinion. Uh, and they've staffed people that are all adherents to uh, Sweet Baby Inc. Because Mary Kennedy is a defender of Sweet Baby Inc. as well. Uh, so this is the latest on CD Projekt Red. They, I think, are definitely in chaos. And I think the CEO's comments here are evidence of that. He's literally proving the rumor from Endymion True by rushing to try and stamp out the rumors uh, by lying. And that's what he did. He lied. Uh, so we are going to reject CD Projekt Red moving forward unless they show true contrition. And they do so not only through their words, but through their actions. And that means they will have to radically alter the policies that they have enacted at their company and make significant staffing changes as well. And probably they will have to remove their DEI department, which they do have. Because if you, if you look at this, Go back here and look at this. They literally have a culture, diversity, and inclusion director. So they have an entire department dedicated to pu pushing this ideology, infecting every part of the company. But let me know what you guys make of this. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to always be charitable, but to always speak the truth.